Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today we have a live Q&A with ESTP Chuck or Charles. And so, yeah, would you like to tell us a bit about you? Yeah, my name is Charles Bellin III. I am 25 years old. Um, I am in big tech. Uh, a lot of what I like to do with my day is just uh, travel, um, go out. Like a lot of my life revolves around nightlife and uh, being physical. So like going to the park, playing like pickup football with my buddies, uh hitting the basketball courts so like yeah a lot of i guess stereotypical sc activities but uh yeah that's basically what i like to do and on top of that music uh play drums as well and live in austin so my austin peeps hit me up I'll have a good time cool stuff cool stuff and so chuck i'm wondering how do you experience your dominant function of extroverted sensing yeah um so i would say the way i experience extroverted sensing is like kind of having this feeling of everything around me at all times like i don't know how to describe it's like a mental process like i can feel it like in my head but in my body so first off i have a very good understanding of like my body and how to move it and how to like i was gonna say gyrate all around but that's not like the correct <laughs> i wouldn't say that but um understand how to like smoothly move through the physical world and then see opportunities as they arise so i can kind of like we talked about it in the estp panel um I can like feel the pressure of others and then I can also feel how to apply pressure to others or things that I want to affect, right? So that's how I experience SE and I can also experience SE from other people. So other people might feel like they're being very forceful or whatever, but I can feel like there's some like softness or something behind it. So for me, SE, if I could describe it in one word, it would be like force. It would be that like force I feel between me and other objects, how much force to apply on certain objects, how much force somebody needs to apply in an argument. Again, it goes across everything. It's not just like maybe you're uh, maybe like working with tools or throwing a football. It also applies to arguments and debate and things like that. Um, so everything for me is pretty much physical and I pretty much live in SE all day. So it's kind of hard to differentiate uh, what another person's consciousness or their everyday life would be like, if that makes sense. Absolutely. You mentioned this element of being able to see opportunities. And because extroverted sensing can be in the moment, it is able to see all the opportunities the moment is presenting at that current state. Yeah. And they're the best at that. They're also great at body language reading as well. Yeah. Yeah. Observant and seeing things with a fresh pair of eyes, not having any preconceived layer on top of it like introverted sensing does but bringing mm -hmm. a new fresh perspective perceiving there yeah i like and what you said there about uh, a fresh perspective because i feel like i don't have preconceived notions or beliefs or conventional views on thing i things i kind of just take it as i go because every situation is different and i do have a catalog of experiences i can go back to i'm not sure if that is si or se but um, yeah, it, I would very much say I'm not applying a mental framework to the world. I'm letting the world apply its mental framework to me. Absolutely, yeah. And so Charles, would you like to tell us about your second function, introverted thinking? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I feel like introverted thinking at its most basic level is me understanding what makes sense in the moment. I know like, um, ETPs can have this characteristic that people think they're heartless or whatever, or that they're fiery sociopaths or whatever people say, like crazy things I see on Reddit. And it's more so like, I just don't do what doesn't make sense. So it like is painstaking for me to do what doesn't make sense. So I guess what that would be or how that would differentiate from somebody who maybe has like FI second, like with like an ESFP, because I have an ESFP buddy that I talk about a lot. A lot of times when we talk about the world, I will talk about it as it is and how it makes sense. So like he was talking about um, like the fact that new world order is he's pretty into conspiracy theories. Me, do I know if it's true? No, that's not what this podcast is about. But for me, it was more so, does this make sense? Would it make sense? Would this be how you would control the world? And I was like going into breaking down the frameworks of like, yeah, this makes sense because this would be a, a easy way to control like the whole earth. And he was irate, screaming about how that was wrong and how there were all these morals behind it. And for me, 
it's like, I don't really care or think about that. For me, everything has to logically make sense. And if it logically makes sense, I'm good. I accept it. And from there, I just operate within it. So it's like, I accept reality as is, and then use my TI to maneuver through it logically. And this helps me a lot. Another way it differentiates from like um, TE buddies I have is that I'm able to take frameworks from other, I guess you could say, uh, subjects or experiences from the past and apply them to the now rather than having to relearn a bunch of things. It's like once I understand the basics, like so describe like sports, something physical that's easy to understand. Like if I I was showing a buddy how to play golf and I mentioned to him that it's you swing a golf, a golf uh, club, just like you swing at a baseball. It's like the same thing back and forth. And so having that TI allows you to categorize different movements and different strategies or tactics um, that get the job done across multiple different situations. Mm, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. And what is your experience of extroverted feeling, Effie? Uh, I feel like extroverted feeling is just what I use to lay down the charm. Like, honestly, when I feel like when I'm like I'm in tech sales, so obviously there's a lot of smoozing involved there. Um, obviously, you got to know what you're talking about, too. That's where the TI comes in. But it, it does help to be funny and be able to understand how to alleviate tension. It also helps you get a lot of free stuff, um, helps you with the opposite sex quite a bit a lot as well. Um, I don't know. It, it's really like for me, FE is me attuning to my environment and knowing the right thing to say to get the right response that I need in that moment. Mm. Um, and like, obviously, if we build a relationship, I might start like to care and like actually take it to the next level of FE, if that makes sense. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. And so how do you experience introverted intuition and I? Yeah, so <laughs> I feel like, damn. Well, when it comes to an I, like it's more so like I'm strategizing with it maybe. So I see, when I think about the future, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like I need other people's oh. NI to know how to, uh, how to like operate in the future. So I need somebody else's plan. So I would need like maybe like a mentor, like I've had a lot of mentors throughout my life that have helped me create a plan and see different pathways forward. And then I can use that and build my own NI with it. But again, I don't know if that's just TI or if that's actually NI because NI is something that is so just out there and confusing me. The only way I could tell is like, I'll understand maybe what something means without focusing on all the details. Every once in a while, I'll get an epiphany that comes into my head randomly. And it could be like a completely stupid, like what most people would call high thoughts. But that's basically all I can tell you about my NI. <laughs> Yeah, a yeah. typical ways that inferior and I can show up is accidentally making the same mistake twice. Yeah. So you experience it and it doesn't fully catalog. And so you're like, oh, I'm going to do it again. So over trial and error with some things. Yeah. And in the inferior slot, sometimes it can come out in negative ways in the form of hasty generalizations. So if you're yeah. seeing something, you might quickly jump. Oh, it's actually that. Yeah, I, I have a lot of that. Even with people, I'm not sure if like NI and maybe because it's with FE there connects to people, but I'll definitely make like hasty generation gener generalizations where I might be like, why is this person acting weird? Why is this person being this way? Like, I'll just say it out loud to my buddy. I was like, dude, this dude is weird. Like, why'd you invite him? He's annoying as hell or something like that. And it's like, <clears throat> I don't know. It's like, then like my buddy will be like, oh, well, he's this way because of this or maybe he's just a little shy or maybe he, you just need to do this and like collect a different and like i completely miss that and i just generalize it's like oh well this person's an idiot or something like that like real off the bat so yeah makes sense yep and so everyone in the chat feel free to ask questions they don't have to be specifically type related questions but anything you want to ask charles 
So make it about life or anything and we'll get to them and see what interesting thoughts you all have. The purpose of these live Q and A's are to get to know the guests on Type Talks a little bit more in depth, giving you the chance to ask them questions from the audience perspective. So the first one is from Naisu and she says, thanks to Chuck and Joyce for having this live as both beta quadra types. How is the experience of NI, SE, and SE, NI flow? How is it different? How is it similar? Okay. Um, so SE, how I see it is I don't trust, and I think I read this somewhere, but I, I really resonate with it. I don't trust things to go. Like, I don't trust things to just go the way I want them to. Like, I, I'm not good at just like going with the flow and trusting that we'll end up at the bar that I want to end up at or I'll get the promotion that I want. So I go in SE overdrive, taking action on so many things to the point where it's almost impossible. So like I wanted straight out of college a six figure job because I wanted a nice place to live. I wanted nice cars. I wanted the watches. I wanted all that stuff. So for me, it was like. I'm going to do everything I can. So I like grinded to be president of a fraternity. I had like three internships. I did all these things to ensure that that happened. Now there were people who did less than that that ended up in the same position, but it's like, it seems to be like this NI understanding that maybe I'm missing of where they kind of understand how to connect the dots. Whereas I'm kind of just slaying everything like I can, I can like out in the open. I'm building all the relationships I can like in a corporate setting, I'm not going to like strategically go from this person to this person to this person to this person. I'm going to be known throughout as a guy that everybody loves, just building relationships with everybody so that it benefits me later. And so it's like that SE indulgence. And it's also like I want to make sure I'm having a good time. So I think somebody wrote in here about like, oh, SE for me is like overindulgence. And it's like it's like that for me, too, but I can cut it off before I overindulge. But it's like I will take things to the absolute max rather than let them flow out. Like when I get to the party, I'm like we had a, we hosted a kickback in my buddy's uh, my buddy's like penthouse like on Friday. And immediately like I'm slamming like 13 or 14 shots because I want to make sure it's a good night. And I'm a big guy, so I'm not gone from that. But like so for me, it's like I got to make things happen rather than let things happen where it seems like NI is much better at just sitting back and feeling the flow of things and letting things happen. Yeah, and with an SE dominant type, you're going to have someone who likes to make an impact sometimes as well. You'll see Charles in the middle of a club doing the worm because it's this sparkliness that SE doms have in situations. I know certain SE doms too, who will dress up very nice to make an yeah. impact as well. So you'll see that as well. And you'll see that Charles is a very ambitious type of ESTP. And so it's very easily mistaken as other things. Um, he's also an Enneagram three. So that adds to his ambition as well. Yeah. And with NI in the dominant slot, you're going to have someone who actually watches and observes more than jumping into action as quickly as Charles does. Cool. And so what did you think about typology and type before? How did you become interested in it? Yeah. So uh, to be honest, I think I did this in high school and I thought absolutely nothing of it. Like I basically just circled random stuff so I could get it done with because I just didn't care. <laughs> and that's just not something that I even to this day really tend to get hung up on is like that existential crisis of like, oh, who am I? What character am I? Like I'm a campaigner or am I a debate? Like that's not really a big thing in my life. But um, I was originally a drummer and I was on tour and like that was going to be my life. Like I was playing behind different famous people. I can just close that on here, but like just going through the motions and wanted to be a famous drummer and then decided that the life like was just way too wild. And that, that just lets you know how wild it is. If it's too wild for SE Dom and I needed to crank it back a little bit after some incidents. And so went into uh, go back to like college at like 20, 21 to see what that was all about. And I didn't know what I wanted to study. So I took like that test and I got ESTP and it said something about entrepreneurship and sales. 
and how they were like really well geared for that. And so I tried it out and tried selling cars and did really well. And that was really what led me into it. And, you know, during uh, quarantine, I got deeper into it and read and studied it. But I guess my thoughts on typology, it's a good starting point. But and this could just be like an SE Dom thing. A big thing for me is like the way I understand people is through like physically meeting them. So like actually going and traveling the world and meeting people from different perspectives and getting to understand how they might be different than me, like in a conversation or getting them into a situation and seeing how they respond to it rather than me so much like reading and then applying it, like I said, to somebody else. Like I said, I don't really apply like MBTI, like I don't really like uh, apply it to people. Like you can obviously figure out like when you're talking to an ESFJ and stuff. But like my thoughts on typology are that, especially now, maybe people are taking it too far and they need to just dial it back and be humans and understand that we're all, uh, I, my, like my favorite saying of all time is not just that makes sense, but we're all adults. So like be an adult and go talk to that person and figure it out. In the mm -hmm. real world, it'll show you. Yeah, so that's my thoughts on typology. Um, not something that I'm crazy into, but it's interesting and it's helped me a lot in life. So it's cool. Yeah. It's a good starting place to understand the framework or the map of someone, but you fill in the territory. You understand how the mountain actually looks yeah. on the map by seeing the person and asking about the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very, very true. What did you initially type as and did the result resonate with you at the time? Uh, I think... I so this is kind of an interesting question because like when I first took it, I just didn't really care. Um, so I think when I first took it, like it was like ESTP and did it resonate? Yeah, it was like, oh, you like to have fun and you do daredevil stuff. So I was like, well, that was kind of me when I was like six and seven. Yeah, but what kid didn't like do stupid shit and hurt themselves at seven and eight? But um what the one that I really resonated with, and I've told you this before, Joyce was uh, ENTJ because I took it at work and I got ENTJ. But then like once I started reading into the functions and that description worked, and it might be because I'm an Enneagram three, like I'm very achievement oriented, you know, very into investing, very into all these finance things that, but at the end of the day, it's so that I can have money to fund my experiences more than to like build something. And so once I started reading about the functions, I was like, oh, okay, like I don't really have any of this NI stuff they're talking about. Don't have this TE. And then I talked to you about it, Joyce, and it was like, okay, you're ESCP. But like, it's weird that way. And that's why I say MBTI don't put too much stock into it because there's a lot of stereotypes out there about types. Like the descriptions, some of the descriptions I read don't seem like the people that they type at as at all in real life. Like, and maybe it's just me not picking up on it, but I think they're glamorized and uh, and any type can be anything. So like, honestly, like with the ESTP thing, I think a lot of people outside myself that know about MBTI are like, dude, you are clear cut in ESTP. Like the people I know in my real life, like that showed this to me. Yeah. They're like, oh, that makes so much sense for me. I don't know. I just don't focus enough on the self component of things to really like be like oh this thing gets me it's just more so like uh yeah those like factors line up and that's interesting yeah interesting point about the stereotyping i find that to be a human phenomenon whenever people get into things they like to start to stereotype things as a way to quickly categorize things and yeah. it, takes, it takes away the accuracy and it's a quick hit so people like to do it it's kind of yeah. like Asians, you have a lot of stereotypes with Asians, you have the small eyes, you have the eating rice, you have the different sayings or all of the different things. I didn't think any of that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it may not like Asian stereotypes may not hold true for all Asians. And that's yeah. where the difficulty comes in for sure. And so I would say it's not type that is the issue. It's that the human beings sometimes have a yeah. proclivity towards stereotyping. Yeah. And so as a community, it's important to stay mindful of that. Absolutely. So that we don't overdo that and then take away the benefits of type through that. 
Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Charles, you're a very clear cut ESTP. <laughs> <laughs> and so oftentimes when I talk to ESTPs, I've talked to so many ESTPs in the type community. Mm -hmm. And something I hear over and over again from different ESTPs is how, you know, when they're at their work self, they look more ENTJ like. Yeah. When you, you're working, you literally look more like a TJ if you're yeah. a thinking type in general. And so when if you take it, if you take a test within the mentality of you being at work, so many ESTPs, so many ESTPs, this is not talked about enough, mm -hmm. tend to start off going like, huh, my work self is ENTJ, though. It's like, and I'm like, that's not how it works. You don't have to. Yeah. Do <laughs> <laughs> that's how it seems in your head, though, because I think that a lot. I'm like, man, like, I sure feel like very ENTJ-ish right now. Like, and I don't relay. It's, it's almost like maybe, and I, I'm sure everybody does this, like your personality just adapts to whatever the situation needs you to be. Yeah, it also relates to Linda Barron's interaction styles. So mm. Linda Barron's talks about how the ESTP and the ENTJ share the in-charge interaction style, and mm. that is getting things done. And yeah. just being a part of the ST types, ST types like to get things done efficiently and do it right as well. And so that adds on to it as well. So how does NI manifest in your life down what path has inferior NI taken you? So I think it affected me a lot more when I was younger. Um, when I was younger, like I clearly, like I used to, I remember I had uh, this, this uh, female friend in high school. I call her a female friend because we weren't like, it was a platonic friend for once. And like, we were basically... I told her like, I feel like I have no concept of tomorrow. And because of that, that caused a lot of problems. Like I can, even today, it's more so like I've worked around not comprehending tomorrow. And like, you have a lot of different things like work schedules where you can kind of like, you know, you're going to work tomorrow and that's it. But like, for me, I don't know if it's necessarily, it caused problems in my youth, but I would say I got myself into situations like, and I'm not sure if it's an ESTP thing, Joyce, but I kind of build, I find something I'm consciously becoming aware of is about the time I hit age 21, 22, I started almost using maybe FE to put myself in situations where a structure would create one form, where a structure was created for me to where I don't have to worry about NI like that. So like, I know my buddy was the ENTJ. He refuses to work for a corporation. He's like, I'm going to be the CEO. I know more than everybody. Why should I work for anybody? Blah, 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 blah. And, you know, he feels very confident that he can order the world to create his own like big Facebook esque business where he will, he, he just feels like he can control and knows what's coming to the point where he can adapt in the future like run of things to create his own corporate entity and make it in life that way. Me, I'm just kind of like, why do that when I can just go to Facebook or Google and make six figures there and get in a cushy job and then invest in on the side. And now I've got Google, Facebook, like these types of companies telling me I have to be here at this time and I can just follow that and I don't have to actually think about like what's going on tomorrow. So like I find everything from like whether it's like working out and losing weight, whether it's budgeting, all that stuff. I really just like to create these maybe TI built systems or I guess the way I see the world that keep me in place and help me avoid the NI. And I think for ESTPs, they really need to find um, what they're good at because like this is kind of beside the point, but something that I think about, I think personally, and there's no proof of this, I was watching The Last Dance. I would say Michael Jordan is an ESTP. And even if he's not, it doesn't matter. ESTPs could learn a lot from Michael Jordan because that's literally the path of progress and like money. Everything falls into place once an ESTP finds something they're actually good at. When you're like, now I'm going to get in a lot of ESTPs Kool-Aid with this shit, but when you're that dude who just wants to be cool and look good and be suave and like, oh, the, uh, the girl's like me, I'm so charming. Oh, I'm an ESP. Like when you're in that mode, you're not going anywhere, bro. Like it's all in your head, man. Like this is NI, like 
pumping up your head. But when you can actually find like a skill and settle down, like whether it be, and I think this is something can, we can learn from ISTPs is like when you can actually settle down and be like, hmm, I want to get good at investing or I want to be good at making music or I want to be good at a sport or I want to be good at um, some type of trade, like working on cars. That's when we can come alive and we can build that system where every day we're just going to, we don't know what's coming tomorrow, but what we know is that we're good at our craft. We're going to keep pushing at getting better at our craft and doors are going to open because we're going to become the best at whatever that craft is. And I think that is like the development path where if I was a like, cause I know I've been in that space where like, you don't know what's tomorrow and you feel like you're having a lot of fun. Maybe you feel like you have a lot of friends. Maybe you feel like you're really popular and stuff, but you just almost feel like you're a kid and you don't have life figured out and you're just kind of going day from day and you're worried, you know, again, 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 the ESTPs cool. And I think it's common for ESTPs and even ESFPs too, to be worried that they're going to get left behind because they don't figure out this NI stuff. And to me, I think that the truth about it is the ESTP's path to like righteousness is figuring out how to be undisposable. And the way you do that is by becoming good at something. And then when you become good at that, doors open and you're not really focused on all the crazy stuff and categorizing it so you can have that NI vision because you don't need that. You need to be the Michael Jordan, who's the best basketball player ever. So every team wants him no matter what. Like no matter how, like whatever antics happen, they want them. LeBron James, they're going to want them. If you, if you focus more on having fun and you just wild out, well, then you're going to be like Kwame Brown and nobody's going to want you. And like, you're just going to flunk out the NBA and nobody's going to care. And holy crap is going on YouTube. I'm sorry, Kwame Brown. I'm sorry about that. Don't come, don't come kill me, man. But that's like the truth. Like that's what ESTVs need to hear. And I think that's the development past that. And I, Mm, that was quite motivational. Was it really? Huh. <laughs> you're you're helping people live in their their truth by finding their passion, which is what yeah. everyone should do to find the thing that sparks them up and to aim linear almost to laser gaze at that. Yeah. And so so Dame, thank you so much for that ten dollars. Very, very yeah, thanks, good. man. <laughs> <laughs> how did you know you weren't an ISTP? Uh, just didn't really resonate with me. Um, like I get like, I feel like ISTPs, they have more focus. They're, they're, and they're much more quiet. Like an ISTP doesn't say nothing until they're like ready to speak. That's something I've noticed at least about the ISPs I know. They, they'll just like stare at you with like this piercy stare and you're just like, I did I say something? What's going on? It's like, really, they're just waiting because they don't like to waste words. And they're like in unbelievably terse. Like ISTPs might be the most like careful with their, not careful. Maybe that is the right word. Careful with their words. Maybe like, they're just very like, they don't say anything unless they need to say it. ESTPs, it's more like we say things and just keep saying things until they stick. I don't know. And I think that's just like the ESP way. You just keep blurting out quick ass sentences and somehow they all connect where ISPs are much more like, man, you could talk to them for 35 minutes and they don't say a word just staring at you. And then you're just like, then they're just like have a sentence that perfectly concisely explains everything you just said. And you feel listened to. And like, I don't know. I'll, I'll say, I think ISPs are a lot cooler too. Like they're a lot better at just like, ESTP will kind of make a spectacle of things where the ISP would just be sitting there smoking and look up and then go back to what they're doing. And it's just like, all right, like that dude's a badass, you know? So like, I, like for me, <clears throat> I think I, I, it was just kind of clear cut and obvious based off, even though this is like stereotypes, like I don't see ISTP being a president of a frat. I don't see ISTP like doing all these different, very showy things. I don't see them, doing the worm in the middle of a club. I don't see them picking up a girl and like doing it in the middle of a club, like in different like things that we do just to be wild. I just don't see it. So that's why. Makes sense. 
Yeah. With the talking out loud thing, it's also a sign of extroverts in general. You'll see extroverts talking out loud to understand things, whereas introverts will wait until a sentence has fully formed to say things. Yeah. Typically. Um, yeah. And so how did you not know? How do you know you weren't an ISTP? One of the other ways that you can tell these types apart, too, is the inferior function. So an ISTP is going to struggle the most with extroverted feeling. And so that's going to be their kryptonite. And with the ESTP, their kryptonite is introverted intuition. And so they're going to struggle with different things. And ESTP is better at recovering. So if there's a socially awkward moment, an ESTP is going to have an easier time finessing or charismatically charming their way out of it. And it'll be less of a big deal if something like that happens. Whereas an ISTP may not always have the... Uh, social recovery abilities from potentially messing up the social sphere in some <laughs> way. So yeah. you'll notice the FE lower down for the ISTPs in that way. Yeah. Another this thing is, too. Something I don't think about because <laughs> like, whatever, <laughs> like even if it does happen, I'm probably just going to smooth it over, you know, yeah. like, I've made my social faux pas several times and like you, you can usually make a joke and get out of it. And people will just be like, oh, it's just Charles being Charles. Yeah. And another way I tell apart these two types is when they're on a shenanigan or they're doing things, who is the one instigating or initiating it? Is It's typically I see my friends when they're friends. I always have like ISTP friends who are friends with ESTPs. And then the ESTP will always bring the ISTP on the shenanigans. It's like, hey, yeah. hey let's do this. Let's do this. And the ISTP is like, oh, okay. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> They're like secretly loving it. Yeah, I love that dynamic. Cause like they act like maybe, cause I had an ISTP roommate and I'd always be like, yo, let's go out, let's go do these things. And we'd kind of be like, oh, I'm gonna be responsible, let's go. Like, and then it would come out and be a good time. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, makes sense. <laughs> and so what about the ESTP description made sense and resonated with you? After finding out what the cognitive functions were, what about the S E T I F E N I data flow did you finally become aware of? Um, so the ESTP description and more so just like, so it depends which one it is like 16 personalities. It makes sense. Like I can see myself in that, um, regard IDR labs made some sense. Uh, like definitely like my business side, I more so see in the IDR labs. Um, when I read like the SLE ESTP thing that made a lot of sense, like that made the most sense out of all of them. And that's when I started learning about the functions. So the SE, the way um, I understood SE through like the SLE description was understanding that power dynamics. That is something like I'm always in tune with. And like I said, like SE can be described as like a physical understanding of pressure and motivation and all these things. And I feel like that's an apt description. Like we understand who's real and who's not. I understand the reality below what you're showing because I can feel that. And that's what I think the SE is. Um, T I F E. I can tell because I've talked to you about this before, Joyce, with the ESP video. Uh, so you know, and I know this is kind of a side tangent, but it's kind of like an easy way to know. When I, I see a lot of people not understanding if they're ESTP or ESFP. If you're an ESTP, you basically don't understand the need for all these weird social niceties for all these things, but you do it because like as just a knee jerk reaction. So that's an FE. Like, I don't think an ESTP really has to uh, put an effort to FE. It's more like it's just a natural response. So if you're good with people, but it's just natural and you're just doing it, like that's that tertiary FE. And I like how uh, a flow state when we're in the ESTP group, he mentioned how FE is like the frosting on the cupcake, but it's not the good part. Like the TI is the good part. So that feeling like with the TI, what I personally really like is like gaming the system. Like I like breaking rules and getting away with it and making things way more efficient. And then like, ha, I like, I trump that. And so I read about how like TI is more about like understanding and creating your own frameworks. And I find like I have all these frameworks that bypass all these FE societal rules that I think are just stupid. So like the way I said it's like ESCPs tend to, even though they're not necessarily sociopaths or antisocial per se, they might come off that way because of how their functions are developed. Like you see the world as it is, you see the logical thing to do without emotions involved. And then you have this FE to cover it up. 
where you're maybe making the person laugh or whatever, not because you want anything bad or you're trying to manipulate that. It's just something that naturally comes out. And then NI being last was pretty uh, obvious. And then the FI blind spot was like a big one um, that I resonated with. Because what I resonate with that FI blind spot is the sheer amount that I just don't give a fuck about your FI or FI in general. Um, TI takes place of that. And like, it being something that's a deficiency, but not when you care about it, is something that resonated with me. So that's my uh, long-winded description of how you know. Like if you're an ESTP, once you read it, it just makes sense. I think all ESTPs know they don't give a fuck. Like, like I, I know that's so like basic, but like we just all know like None of this dumb shit that everybody else cares about. I'm sorry, Joyce. I don't know if I can like swear like this on your thing. I'll, I'll, I'll like cut it back. But like, we just know how much this stuff doesn't matter that like other people think does. And so, cause it just logically doesn't. And that's just that SETI in front. That's how I see it. Yeah. It, it's pretty funny because it, it's okay to swear because if someone is looking for <laughs> content, then yeah. we'll probably go to an ISTJ panel I have or something. <laughs> if you're in an ESTP panel, you know something might be up. <laughs> you just know. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And so something big with ESTPs is they want good experiences in their life. And to get that in your life, or like they like experiencing, basically, <laughs> and getting in a breath of experiences. So they're very open to experiences because of that. And so sometimes you need resources to actually gain these experiences because they're not free. And so you'll see some go-getter ESTPs that look like very strange ESTPs, but it's just how society is set up. It's capitalism. So you're going to yeah, see Yeah, it's Yeah. That's a great way to put it, Joyce. Like I was that guy who everybody else was bitching about capitalism. And I was just kind of like, like in my college class and then in my head, I'm like, oh, wait, I can have all this stuff if I just do this. Oh shit. Yeah. I'm gonna go do that. Like, screw it. Like I'll grind for a couple of years and make my money. If it means like I get to have all the experiences I want and do everything I want. Like that makes sense to me. Like, but you know, I say that to like my ENFP buddy and oh my God, like it's going all the way left. And we're having a whole conversation that I'm most likely not even listening to. And I'm just nodding my head. And it's just one of those things where I think, uh, I think we are just so driven to live life to the fullest because one day you're going to be like 80 years old on a walker. You can't do nothing with your body anymore. You're about to die in a couple of years. No offense, 80 years old, 80 year olds in the chat. Um, and it's just one of those things where uh, you're going to wish that you went to Tha Thailand and had that three way or that you got drunk a little bit or did all these crazy things. Like these are just huge things that people don't think about but they do on their deathbed. And that's kind of like my synopsis in light. I want to have all the fun I can before I can't have it anymore. Mm, that is good philosophy, a philosophy yes. of fun. So how has type info and verbiage been helpful for you as an SC dominant type? Again, I kind of already had like my understanding of myself before this. So it really is just like, it helps. But like I said, I think a lot of this is like, you just have to have experiences that build who you are, what you prefer, um, and then get into typology. And then it just kind of labels it. It's like, like for me reading it, it's like, oh yeah, yeah. I know what they're talking about. Like, that's what that is. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. So that's why other, so for me, the biggest thing that typology did was help me understand that other people work in a different way. Cause I thought everybody was like this. You know, like I thought everybody and th there was just an aptitude to it. Like, I guess my view before MBTI was everybody's an ESTP. I'm just a better ESTP, you know, like so now that like now that like I understand, oh, no, this person is an INFP and we share no functions. And this is what they're really good at. Like, even though I don't necessarily care much about FI, like this guy is really good at like getting into his like the INFP buddy I have. Um very good at getting into like his FI and his childhood and stuff and like on his own listening to the weekend for like hours and like digging in his head into his feelings and stuff. And like, that's probably something that maybe sometimes ESTPs could benefit from and we wouldn't make as many, uh, as many uh, mistakes, but sorry, I'm trying to read your question and bring it back in. 
Um, verbiage, yeah, I mean, maybe like the volatition, uh, like I, I remember that word really stuck out for the SE, uh, made a lot of sense uh, with the TI, the analyti uh, anal analytical side of things, because I feel like my outward presentation doesn't come off as analytical, but I know internally I'm analytical. Um, and then, yeah, like NI pattern recognition, I was like, oh, I could see that. Like that is something I struggle with. So like that would make sense that that's on the back. So um, yeah, like I said, it's really hard for me to be like, oh yeah, I came in MBTI and found myself from, because I already had like an idea of these things. So like the verbiage is interesting, um, but useful, like, I guess, like, I guess it gives me a nice like coat hanger to put in the closet and understand um, why I do the things I do. Yeah, it's super impactful that you said before type, you thought that everyone was an ESTP too, you're just a better ESTP. Yeah. And that's typically how people view the world too. You think that everyone else is kind of like you because on the surface, we all look human. So we think that the inside is just the same as well. Yeah. And so oftentimes people go through life kind of judging other people for not being as good yeah. at the things that they're naturally good at. Like an ESTP might look at someone who's in a constant state of inaction and go like, what are you doing? You're just sitting there and staring and, and doing nothing with your life. Yeah. When they really are doing something, but it's more mental and in their head. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'd say that's where I see the benefit of MBTI, where I feel like in like the benefit in what people need to get from it once they understand their own type, of course, is that we're all different and we all have like a piece to play or like a, a, a role to play in society. Like we all have something to offer. Nothing is necessarily better than anybody else's. And we can come together in peace from that. And it cannot be so, I don't know, judgy like it is nowadays where everybody is just kind of like, oh, I'm better than that person. I'm better. Oh, your beliefs suck. You know, it's like everybody's different, has different perspectives. Everybody's useful. And that's something that I think a uh, perspective I gained from MBTI because I definitely like just could not understand why maybe a kid like could not catch a football or why they were struggling to talk to female or just, just little things that I just thought were like natural because I don't know. I've told you before, I had a pretty natural like upbringing of like all the like different stages. Like I was a wannabe gangster in middle school. I was a party boy in high school who cared about having abs and would like take, little douchey ass photos in the, <laughs> in the, in the bathroom and stuff. Like, you know, I went through all the like things that I thought were normal in society to go through, but I'm learning like everybody has different, you know, I was just kind of like, well, you just play football in high school. That's what you do. You know, like, it's not, what else are you going to do in high school? You know, like it was really simple to me. So yeah, it's been interesting to hear other perspectives for sure. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. What shape does demon and E take? So okay. you, this is the eight function model, but you don't have to know it to kind of speak from it. So what is your experience of extroverted intuition in yourself, basically? Okay, so I don't really understand extroverted intuition much, but I have, I remember reading about this where it was like, a, like demon any, if they're not having a good time, nobody has a good time or they might mistake other people's intentions or something. Is that what that is or? I know any is some type of create, like I read it and they were like, any types have regions in their brain that activate and they might hear, they might see grass and think of a cow. And it like really just didn't make any sense to me. And I was like, not that any does don't make sense, but like they didn't explain it very well for somebody who doesn't have it to understand it. Yeah. A, a problem that extroverted intuition has often is it can generate so many possibilities and keep them at equal tension. So this possibility is just as likely as that, as that possibility and not being mm -hmm. able to see the realistic option there. Sometimes. Okay, so I think I always see the realistic option. I always know like the deal I'm getting. That's what I like to say um, based on what choice I make. Um, I, I remember hearing that like demon NE or reading that demon NE in ESPs has to do with like something of misreading the room and or if they're not having a good time like nobody's having a good time that's just what i read on it um any for me i don't really see 
uh, a lot of like different possibilities. I kind of see, I mean, I can't. So, okay, I know I can explain this. I have an ENFP buddy that I go out with quite a bit out here. I remember he's always like, every time we go out, he's got all these different things we could do. And I'm just kind of like, why would we entertain all these other ideas when we know what's good? So like, like I'm catching my win. I'm getting what any is now. Like any is when somebody's like, do I want Papa John's Pizza Hut or Marcos or Domino's or something? And it's like, they give all these options. And it's like, dude, we know what the good experience is. Like, why are we going to entertain these other perspectives that are not as good as what we know is good? That's how I experience it. And that could be a negative representation, but I see like, especially if I've already experienced it, I am not open. Like if I know the best, I'm in Texas. So like barbecue is really big down here. And there's this place called uh, Terry Black's down here. That's like award winning. I know that's the best barbecue. I'll try other barbecue places for fun. But if I'm feeling like barbecue and I want to go to barbecue with my any buddies, they might be like, oh, well, let's try this place. So like we haven't ate there in a while. And it's like, yeah, well, there's a reason we haven't ate there in a while because this one is the best. Like we like this one the best. So I think it's that SE indulgence and wanting to have the best experience possible. And it's clashes with that NE like variety. Cause it seems like any users don't even care about the experience. Personal, I could be wrong, but the NE users I know, like they have no problem maybe like, like I'll use food. They have no problem if the burger is from like Wendy's, Whataburger or McDonald's. If it's a burger, it's a burger. I've noticed. And I'm just kind of like, no, it has to be from like the burger place that I think is best or that you think is best. Like they can do a lot of different things and accomplish the same goal and they don't really care which one they pick. They're more so focused on the variety. And again, that's a skill because they can often see paths that I can't see or that might be more efficient because I'm just focused on the experience rather than the actual like other factors of it. But at the same time, like that's my feelings on any like if I know what the experience is good, what experience is good. I don't want to entertain a bunch of possibilities and get derailed. Like if I know what club is popping, I don't want to entertain this club that's like over there that I didn't have fun at like two months ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes for extroverted intuition, the fun, most of the fun comes from thinking about the idea rather than the doing of that or experiencing yeah. the idea too. So that's a difference because SE DOMs actually do like to experience the thing more often than think about it. It's like, okay, it's a thought, but are you going to experience it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like it's like the experience matters a lot. Cause I know like one time my ENTP buddy came over and I had like, this was back in college. Um, it was like the first couple of days of summer and we went to the pool and, uh, a bunch of fools came over and we got all, he got all these different steaks from like different, like uh, different, uh, what are they called? Like stores, like different, like local grocery stores to see who had the best steak. And I was like, why didn't you just get like <laughs> the same? But anyways, then he got them and he makes them all, but like he doesn't buy enough like sauce and seasoning for all of them. So half of them didn't even get seasoned. And I was super pissed because I was like, now we can't even accomplish what you wanted us to accomplish, which was to like judge each and every one because like half of them have seasoning and half of them don't. And it's like, did you think about this at all? Or do we just, you know? And so I think that's where like, you can obviously see where any takes me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are a certain subsection of extroverted sensing users who are a bit snobby with their experiences because they can feel the nuanced differences between the different experiences. Yeah. So you have like the good thing, the good sauce and the bad sauce. Why do you put the bad sauce on your steak? <laughs> um, it's also an awareness of sensing in general as well, too. Yeah. If possible, what cognitive function that isn't on your stack would you like to experience for understanding as a simulation for a day or so? Hmm. That isn't in my stack. Uh, maybe TE. Um, I feel like I have very good TE, even though I don't have it. Or maybe SCT I simulates that, but I I would like to know what it's like to just sometimes like my TE Dom friends amaze me. Um and even like TE auxiliary too, the way they just kind of know the most efficient way to do something off the back. Like they don't even have to think about it. They just kind of say it out loud. Like I can do the most efficient thing, but they can actually direct others. So I would like to experience what that is like. And then 
Uh, maybe SI because then like I would just remember where everything is and like I'd be okay doing the same thing every day. And that, that would be like a nice change of pace to not have to like find uh, something new, enjoyable or stimulating just to be cool, with just, just chilling and just, just vibing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Instead of having fun at a different place or experiencing a multitude of things, you're just like, yeah. oh, this routine. Yeah. <laughs> Might be nice. Organization be better too. <laughs> um, and so we talked a bit about SE. So I was wondering, how does it feel like to play the drums as you? Well, what does it feel like when it's in your hands and you're kind of do 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 doing? Um, it just kind of feels like I can't describe it. It's like it's like muscle memory. Like SE is like it feels like muscle memory, but for everything. Like I don't have to like think and then do. I can just kind of do and feel it in the moment. I don't know if that makes sense, but like it just kind of feels like energy. When I'm playing the drums, it's not like it just feels like energy and motion and everything's just moving so smoothly. And like I get caught up in the moment. Like I said, it's very much, I can't remember who described it this way. Somebody did. They said it was like meditation where you're just kind of Zen. That's how I feel with a lot of things. Like I can just feel the motion, the waviness. Like I think I said in the ESTP panel, like, uh, I like, uh, I like Bruce Lee's quote, be like water. I don't know if that's it verbatim, but that's the gist of it. Be like water. And it really feels like everything is an ebb and flow all the time. So like when I was playing drums, like I could feel the notes of like the guitar player about to hit and then do a fill and like crash with them. And it's kind of the same way when I'm like playing football, like I can feel which way to juke somebody out or feel how to throw it. Or even when I'm golfing, I can feel the energy go through like the golf club and like as I'm going. And it's just there's nothing better to me than like this is so random, but a beautiful swing in golf. I just had to say that. But like, yeah, it just feels like energy and motion. And it just feels. God, it just feels so good, Joyce. It feels amazing. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you talk about it like you've eaten a really good steak or something. Yeah, honestly, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. There's a certain type of oneness to the SE experience. It's one with the moment almost, being in sync with the moment. I know SE dominant types that like doing physical things, like almost cracking people's backs too. Like there are different things that you just have an intuitive knack for. So the word intuition is used a little different it, differently in Jungian terms than it is in colloquial terms. Because I think intuitive can also be used to describe SE because SE just intuitively knows how to move its body or how to in- enact in a certain situation just because y- your body is such a good calculator of what's exactly happening at that current moment that you're able to yeah. do it with Suave. And Flow State says, what's up, bro? <laughs> hey, what's up, big man? Yeah. I love that guy. He is a good guy. Indeed. He's a good dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What ESTP stereotypes do you agree with and disagree with? Um. So the first one is that ESTPs are bullies. I completely disagree with that. I don't think it's no, like an ESTP might comment on something, but they don't really don't care. They're just really being inquisitive because they noticed it. So like, let's say, I don't know, you're not speaking up during a class presentation. Maybe an ESTP, if they're younger and haven't like learned social etiquette yet, would be like, hey, we can't hear you, bro. Like, and they'll say bro or something. You just think, oh, this guy's such a douchebag. He knows I'm not feeling good up here. He knows I have no confidence. It's like, no, he doesn't. He's wondering why you're talking so low, bro. Like, it's really that simple. Like, so I feel like ESTPs, you're going to take us at like, face value, man. We don't give a shit. Like we're not thinking bad thoughts about you. We're thinking about ourselves. Like we're thinking about ourselves and what we want to do in the moment more so. So like the whole bullying thing, I always, people are like, stare at like, you'll know who the ESCP is. They'll remind you of your high school bully. It's like a ESCP wasn't bullying you in high school. They're focused on like being buff, getting girls like focused on playing football, all these like things. And maybe this is just my experience. But I mean, like this, this feeling of like wanting to be cool and do all the like cool things. Like, and, and you might have some ESTPs on here saying stuff like, well, I wasn't trying to be cool. I was smoking and doing drugs behind the scope. But it's like, well, you were trying to be cool in a different way, man. Everybody has like different ways that they do it. But I think this whole idea that ESTPs go out of their way to like bully and push around other people, 
No, I think the ESCP is the one who doesn't tolerate that because like we can see who's really like about it. And those that are really about it stick to themselves. So it's like some dude who feels the need to come like challenge you. The ESTP is the one you're kind of going to want in your corner because we're like that might be if I had a core value, it'd be like that. I don't like seeing people getting pushed around, especially by somebody who's just like like a, 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 a just straight up like retarded ass douchebag who doesn't know what he's doing. And like, he's not really that, he's not that guy. Like, like the Instagram video, like you're not that guy, bro. Like when, when I see that, I don't like that. Like, so the fact that we're that way, the fact that we treat that male ESTPs treat women bad. I mean, the only fight I got in, in all of college, the only bar fight I was in, in college was because my girlfriend at the time, her friend, uh, this dude was trying to buy her a drink and she didn't want none of it. And like, he didn't, he like pushed her to the ground, like freaked out. And I ended up beating his ass, like being into a fucking pulp. And then we escaped at like the back door of the club. And it's a whole story. Maybe I'll go into that later, but basically like dudes ain't treated like, I feel like I treat the opposite sex like gold. Now, granted, I might not be committed to you out of nowhere just because we had a good time. Like, I didn't propose to you or I didn't, I didn't like uh, ask you out. So like, maybe that's what people are talking about, but it's like, that's more so people putting a bunch of their eggs in one basket and putting labels on things they have no business putting labels on. That's my personal opinion. on. It. And uh, as far as like stereotypes, I do agree with, I would find it hard to find an ESTP who's not sporty because we like to move. So I like I every ESTP that, I mean, you have some out of shape ones that I see every once in a while, but most of them are like pretty in shape. And it's not even like they might not even like go to the gym every day. It's just naturally like the way they like to move their body and the 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 activities they like to do are just naturally physically oriented. So they're going to burn calories and be in shape that way. Uh, what's another one? Uh, I think another one is like the forcefulness, the aggression. I mean, it's very obvious that SE DOMs have some type of energy there, even ESFPs. Like sometimes, like, you know, there's a very visceral feel to that, that SE. So I'll agree with that. So like the ones I don't agree with, don't agree that they're like these sociopaths that treat relationships horrible. It's just more so that other people think they're farther along in a relationship with the ESTP than they really are. And that causes problems, especially if there's no communication of it. And then secondly, that we're bullies. I think if anything, we try to build people up and take the underdog side. I really don't see us going up to an underdog and stuffing him in a locker. Like that's just not something that, you know, we do. I'm not going to say what types do do that, but like, I know it's not us. Um, and then ones that I do agree with are probably like the physicality and the visceralness and, and the flashiness. I've noticed like all of us are kind of like class clowns or like to be the center of attention. And I will not deny that. Like the only person who probably wants more attention is the ESFP. But like, besides that, like, yeah, we're pretty, uh, pretty, I, I would agree with the statements I just made, which is obvious. Cause I said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also agree with the statements that you made. I will say the bully thing depends on a person's maturity level more so. So yeah, that, that's you'll, true. you'll have people who are bullies who are just immature, probably have a bad home life, like they get abused at home. And so what they do is they abuse people at school because they take it, they need to take it out somewhere and they don't know yeah. where to take it out. So they take it out on actual people. And that could definitely be true. I, I like I but I just I feel like that FE, like ESTP wants to be funny and entertaining, especially in high school. And the ones I know, like, it's usually, I, I'm just going to say it. It's usually the ones I find that are bullies are the ESJs. Like, they tend to be, like, if you're talking about, like, a psychopathic bully, like, freaking, uh, what's that movie with the clown? Uh, it, where that crazy dude, Billy, was, like, cutting his cheek. Like, that's some, that's some ESTJ, uh fire for you right there. That's some inferior FI going rampant right there, more so than somebody who actually cares about their reputation and wants to be looked up to. Like ESPs want to be like kind of like the alpha in a sense. They want you to look up to them as like big bro. They don't want like at least that's the ones I know of myself. Like that's what I know. And if they're bullying you, you're probably like an ESTJ being a dick or like a somebody who's just like oversensitive or, so, or something that it like an ESP 
I, at least to myself, I'll say myself, not all ESPs. I can tell if you're somebody who's like, like if you're like a, if you had like a spoiled, like rich kid, like I work with a, a dude who's like a spoiled rich kid and we go to the clubs quite a bit and I might like just step in front of him to talk to a girl. Cause I think it's funny. Cause it's like, well, you're, you've been spoiled your whole life. And so like, and you're kind of like always tattletaling on people as a 30 year old. Like I don't really vibe with that energy and you're a bully yourself to people who can't stand up for themselves. So that's a little different. And that's what I'm getting at with the piece. Yeah. Flow State also mentions a really good point in, in, response to this too and it's how ESTPs tend to not care for other people's misplaced sensitivities sometimes so if someone is overly sensitive about something that they shouldn't be sensitive over sometimes the ESTP is like oh why are you so sensitive about this it's, it's yeah. a joke and it's like, it doesn't even register to us so it's like I could just be shooting my mouth off like I've been doing this whole interview and I could have somebody come and be like, listen, bro, I don't like my steak with seasoning. I didn't really fuck with that comment, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, dude, I don't give a shit about your steak. Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, it is so irrelevant. You bringing this up, right? And that's kind of like the route we go down when people freak out. But yeah, mm, makes sense. And so Katie asks, how well do you know yourself? What method do you take in in order to understand who you are? Mm. So. I don't necessarily, I don't know if I believe in like finding who you are. I think you're creating who you are every day. Cause like I get who I am from my experiences. And on top of that, I also know, and this might just be from life experience. You know, I went from being somebody who was in high school, like a high school athlete and was kind of like a jock to being somebody who quit football because he was tired of dealing with it and joining like band senior year <laughs> with a completely different crowd, but vibe with them just the same to going on the road with uh, famous artists to stopping that, having nothing set up and having to work at Walmart. And I'm going from playing with famous artists, like in like on tour in hotels, whatnot, having a grounded life to like working at Walmart, living back with my mom. And then now here, like a year later, I make six figures, have a badass pad, a badass car, awesome life. And so like, it's like, you can change. If I was looking at life as like who I was in the past and like, oh, I'm just this person set in stone. I don't know that I would have had all the crazy different turns in life that I have had and different successes and different experiences. So I don't know that I necessarily like know myself better it's just I got like I know what experience I've had. I know kind of who I've become. And it's more like a I think yourself is more an idea than something you can truly find. I think it's something like an idea that you're always kind of through your experiences, like melding. And honestly, like for somebody who's like, I just don't know who I am. It's like you don't need to find yourself. You need to create yourself. Yeah, that's an amazing quote. You are creating who you are every day. Yeah. And I think that that's something to keep in mind because it makes people more intentional about what they do every day. If everything is adding to who you are, then you become like, oh, oh no, to make every yeah. day matter. Yeah. And so what is your experience of the SCFE info loop like? What do so you know? I think the SCFE loop is what a lot of young ESTPs are stuck in. And it's basically making decisions based off of social approval or praise rather than what you feel like doing or no, not, well, yeah, yeah. I would say that like what you feel like doing or what makes sense to you. Cause I feel like a lot of times what makes sense and what an ESP feels like doing kind of line up or it's like TI is just our way to build a reason behind what we do. And we are operating from our films and we just don't know it, but um, whichever one it is, it's like, honestly, like, SEFE loop for me, it's triggered when I'm just giving, when I'm too much into my persona. Like, if I've been just like, I experienced a pretty heavy one when I first moved out here to Austin. I just started my, like, brand new big job, first time in big tech, meeting a whole bunch of people, uh, building a huge social circle of like maybe 40, 50 people. We're out on boats. We're having lake parties. We're doing all the types of crazy stuff. And I'm just getting used to like, I'm getting a lot of female attention. I'm getting a lot of like, I'm feeling like I'm that dude, you know, I'm doing crazy, crazy things. And like, it's, it's basically like, 
the image where people are like giving me a lot of praise or just all the stuff on social media and the videos, like I'm posting videos of it. It's like pumping up my ego and I'm feeling like the man. And I'm just now though, I'm letting things slip. Like I'm letting daily responsibilities slip. Maybe I don't go to the gym today. I just decide, yo, we're going to have a pool party. We're going to invite everybody to it and do all this crazy stuff. Like, it's like, I'm more so like, it's almost like I'm trying to turn my life into a, and, and this could be three, we, this could be three wing two on top of ESTP. It's like, I go this route where I'm like turning my life into an MTV music video or something instead of focusing on like, uh, bro, like you've got a really hard, important job to do. You've got things you need to do like, uh, like at home, whether it's like, uh, I don't know, like it could be something like, I don't know. I don't know, like maybe you need to build uh, your desk. Like, cause I got out here before I started work. So I have like an electronic desk in my office that I work from and it's not built. And I'm just going to the pool, doing all these different things, going to the club, having fun there. And it's not because anymore, because like it's, it's partly because it feels good, but it's also because it's like that FE image and I'm getting so much FE praise and the TI doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter what's logical. It doesn't matter about the plans I had. It doesn't matter any of that. Like what matters is getting this high and being seen as a man and getting, having these people like being in the center of all these people on my boys, like shoulders, like raging in the middle of the lake part. Like that's what matters. Like, so for me, SEFE loop comes when I just care way too much about my image or I've been doing a lot of things and getting a lot of praise. I will switch over to that praise as a means for like direction instead of my logical internal side that's like this is what makes sense you have this you have to do you're an adult you have to get this done you have all these things to do like i basically go back to being like in high school or, or back to my college days as an adult <clears throat> mm -hmm. it's a certain high you get and it can yes. be a thing and you can get stuck there yeah well, yeah what is something about yourself that surprises people when they get to know you better um Honestly, probably like thoughtfulness, I would say the fact that like I think through a lot of things. So if when people come to me about like issues, um, they tend to like the advice that I have to give. And they're like, well, wow, like, you know, you've always been funny and we've always had a good time. But I didn't know there was this side to you that like thought about things. I think um, one thing my mentor recently said was uh, my protective side. She's like, you have like a, a, a pr very protective, like Papa Bear side, as much as it seems like everything you do is like to be this larger than life, like personality or whatever. It's more so like because you actually do care deep down and like you won't let people see that. Well, I guess I'm letting all of YouTube see that right now. Jesus. But like, I don't know. It's like it's probably like the, the, the like caring side, like people think that I'm. I think a lot of people can think that maybe I'm a not isn't considerate or they will think that I don't like them. And it's like, like there's a guy in our friend group, I'm not going to say his name, but every time we go out, like he just does things like he might, he, we all make quite a bit of money. And he, he one night he bought like $400 worth of drinks for like these girls and like he got nothing for it. Like they just kind of played him and left. And it's like, I ragged on him about it. Or he might like not go to the gym or like develop, like, like I'll be like, Oh dude, your calves are looking small. But it's like, I do these things because I want, I see something in him. Like I see that he could be that dude. And I tell him this, like when I told him this is when he kind of realized like, yeah, dude, I don't hate you. I don't want you bad things to happen to you. I want you to actualize yourself and be the person that, you know, you can be. And I think a lot of people can miss that. Like, especially seeing from the outside, they're just like, uh, this person is not, oh, he's just a douche. Oh, he's just, a, oh yeah. Typical dude. Like back in college, all oh, typical, like frat leader. Oh, well. And it's like, well, dude, like, nah, like I'm actually, there's more substance behind that. It's more that this is just part of the game of life that you have to play. And like, there's more beneath what you have to show to the world. So yeah, that's what I would say. Mm, how do we get to your teddy bear side? <laughs> what teddy bear side? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about, girl. <laughs> don't even exist. <laughs> how do 
how do you approach friendships? What role do your friends play in your life? Um, I approach friendships in that it takes a lot to get into my inner circle, but once you are there, you are there. So I remember in college, we went to uh, kind of like this homecoming, like big bash on Fry Street, which was like the, the, the like line of bars and clubs on like our college. And it's like me and some uh, fraternity brothers, my girlfriend, uh, a bunch of different like social circles we had out there. And we're walking around, we're having fun. And as we're in the club, like these guys like that I knew from class, they come up to me and they start trying to like dance in my dance circle. And all. I was like, I've had enough of these guys. I just went to the bar. And my girl was like, what was wrong? And I was like, I don't know. They're just all up on me. And she's like, they're trying to be your friends. Like they like you. Like, and that's always a big thing for me. It's like, there will be people who get in my personal space or like will at, talk to me like they know me really well and I will be on guard because I'm like, dude, I don't know you and I don't know your reason for acting acting like this. So like there's a lot of friendships that I miss out on because I can be very like shut up. Like I'll be nice and I'll be like cool and cordial, but it just takes a lot to break through and actually become somebody that is in my inner circle that I'm really friends with. Like I'll be good with everybody, but if, especially if you come up and you're like really trying to push it on me, I really don't respond to that. So, and I've realized myself, like these are people who probably had good intentions and could have been my friends. And like, I've, I've missed out on that from my own like internal issues there. But with friends, it's like, I have a lot of acquaintances and I call it this, I tell them I have a lot of activity buddies and then I have like my boys. And my boys, like, once you're my boy, like, I've got you no matter what. Like, no matter what I've got you, like, I've got your back. That's just what it is. Like, that's kind of like the code I go by. But it will take you a lot to, like, get to that level. And if you do, like, don't screw it up. Because, like, then I'll get, like, really mad and shit can go left there. But, yeah, like, honestly, and that's honestly been a, been a big thing, like, People are going to make mistakes. Like I want to retract what I just said. I know I just said like things can go bad, but I've learned like people are going to do what they do and you kind of can't do anything about it. But the only thing you can do is like be cautious of who's in your circle. So like I am very, 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 very protective of who gets into my inner circle. Like you will not get in easy. We could have a great time. We could go golfing together. We could go, go get, pluckers it's a wing place down here afterwards and shoot the shit watching the game but at the end of the day man like you're gonna have to do that for some months if not years before like i call you a boy you know somebody that i truly fuck with so yeah that's true yeah earning trust is another is another level because you're willing to do a lot of activities with people so it doesn't mean a lot typically because you're you're out having fun that fun partner isn't exactly a lifelong friend that you want there unless they prove themselves in some way. A yeah. real homie. I call it a true homie, but then all of my friends okay. don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I like that. As you have to learn about type, was there a trait, a cognitive function that annoyed you? Has MBTI helped you overcome this barrier? Um, One that I really um deal with is fe fe can kind of be annoying for me because sometimes i feel like it might almost be on autopilot sometimes when i don't like it like if i'm going to the gym or going to pick up some food and like fe is just kind of like on autopilot there i'm not thinking like i'm just there to pick up food i'm just there to lift some weights unless my buddies are there too so like i'm not thinking about how i'm using it so something that can get uh really like annoying to me is when like somebody let's say like there's somebody who's having a bad day and they're rude and i'll just take the food and i'll be like awesome thanks big man and like i'll walk out and i'm like wait a minute like <laughs> like wait a minute that person was like a complete asshole like i should have like did had some because like if you like an esfp uh like for contrast my esfp buddy will be like is there a problem like, do you have a, are you having a bad day? Like his FI will immediately shoot up at that. I'm like, oh yeah. Like, 
they might do say something slick and I was just like, awesome. Thanks, man. Like I'm not even paying attention to it. Like my FE is just overriding and say like, cause I, I don't know. Like I just, it's like, it just, sometimes it comes as a tripwire um, where it's good. Cause you always know what to say, but it's like, sometimes it can be annoying to always do the social appropriate thing. Um, when you really meant to like, wait a minute, that guy just said this and I should do that. And it's interesting because I'm still thinking of this in a TI way of like, it makes sense to do this because they did this rather than like, I'm actually mad and give a shit about it. So it's weird. It's like, I, I guess maybe I wish I could give a shit about things a little more because the level that I don't sometimes like, I should really give a shit about that. Like I should really like press into that more. And I don't. Mm -hmm. I yeah, that makes complete sense. And thank you, Jesse, for recommending my channel to places and thank you anyone for sharing or subscribing or liking i really really appreciate it um, i think another reason why my sub, sub count went up was I, I went to a apt event association of psychological type event and i think maybe some people subscribed from there possibly flow state says don't lie we're all psychos <laughs> <laughs> keeping it real love it yeah, he's like succumbed to the polar FI. <laughs> yes. Before knowing about MBTI, has there been a trait? Ooh, oops, sorry. <laughs> How well are you able to relate to INFJ, INFJ descriptions? Uh, well, I mean, it's one of those things where, there, like, I have moments of INFJ-ness. Like, I think that's, like, I don't know. Like uh, to be honest, like there is a girl I talked to in college is an INFJ. She loved their energy, and I like I love vibing with them. They're great people. But I think what you're asking is like, how often do I find myself operating in the same way? And I feel like they just no, like they just care a lot more about certain things, or they notice or pick up on things that I just don't. So like I can't say that I, I've ever like thought, oh, like really ENFJ is the one I can more relate to. Like I had an ENFJ really good buddy in college and I can relate to him. Like it really seemed like the only difference between us was that he was more, I forgot the word he used to describe it. He was more finessing. He was more like, he's like, I finesse. Like I control the social situation. You more, you might win it, but I control. Cause he was like kind of a competitive. He was a three as well. And he would always get competitive and he would say like, I control. And I would very much say that it's true. Like, but I more so relate to ENFJs than INFJs personally, myself. And that's because we're both extroverts in the NFJ land. Yeah, yeah. So and yeah. INFJs yeah. are way slower to action than ENFJs. And ESTPs are just quick to move in a situation or just life experience it. And there's a lot of difference there. Yeah. So NE demon. So the actual the actual description of any demon is in a crisis situation could experience a flood of options to solve the problem. Could do this, 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 this. Yeah. <laughs> I've had that happen. Um, that, that usually happens when it, like if it's like, where do you, what do you want to eat or something? And I'm not like cutting or on a diet. Like if I can just pick out, man, I basically have to go with all options. I can't like single it out to one. I'm imagining you as the guy who orders everything on the menu. Yeah, pretty much. That's me. That's me like when I have the choice to do that. <laughs> Can't decide. Mm -hmm. What is your experience with fear? How do you deal with it? Okay, I feel like I just zone into fear. So like um, when I was a kid, I experienced. So when I, when I was a kid, I would experience it like fleetingly. And what I mean by that is like, I would act before I thought through things enough to be scared. So I remember being like seven and I just learned how to like skateboard a little bit. And I basically jumped on my friend Esteban's skateboard and tried to like, he lived on a hill that went like, like straight down. And I don't know why I thought this was a good idea, but I don't know. Like, I just was like, oh, I can do that. And went and did it and scraped myself up like really bad. And I didn't really even feel fear until like, right before like right when i started going down i was like oh maybe this is a bad idea and that was like a lack of foresight as i'm older um if there's something that like i should be afraid of it's almost like like i've had times where i might be like driving like really fast and a tire pops and most people will panic but it's almost like i lock into the moment 
and like I'll I'll like apply pressure slow, slowly to the brake and I'll get the car slowed down. Like I'll very much like lock into that moment and do what I need to do. And I feel it. It's like an animalistic. I don't know if other ESTPs can like uh, comment on this, but it feels almost like you have this animalistic zoning in period where your SCTI takes place and you're like analyzing at like a, a crazy rate. And I think that's why uh, we like things like extreme sports or anything like, like for me, if I was to go skydiving and the shoot didn't come out, I would not get afraid. I would get exhilarated trying to like get it out in time. And like, you know, if I splat, that's that. But what's the point of thinking about that? You know what I mean? Like that, and that's kind of like how I think about fear. Yeah, you make yeah, the most survival good. reaction. I like what Jesse said. Mm -hmm. Shout mm -hmm. out Jesse. Yeah, you don't let the anxiety control you. You work with what you have at that moment. Future yeah. problems are for future you. You'll get to yeah. that mountain when you get there. You'll cross that bridge when it comes to that bridge. Yeah. Why would yeah, you cross I love it that. beforehand? <laughs> I love that. You're stealing that. But with the success, are you happy? Would it sustain in the moment of crisis? With the success, are you happy? What is this? this, this uh, yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> I guess like, yeah. I, I'm trying to get wrap my head around the would it sustain in a moment of crisis? Like, what do you mean? Um, maybe you get it more, Joyce. Like, yeah. would I still be happy if I lost it all? Yeah, that's what it basically Oh, was. uh, yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah, I've said that. Like, if all this were to like leave tomorrow, I just go be like a gym, um, like a work at a gym as like a personal trainer and I'd be fine making like 30 K or whatever and living in a one bedroom apartment. Like, cause, cause it's all about the adventure. Like I'll still find adventure and like, I'll find a cheaper place to live or like, uh, like, so, you know what I mean? It's, it's not so much about the status, even though that's like nice too, but it's really like status for me. And I don't know if we'll, any other threes relate to this, but uh, whenever I read three descriptions and they're just kind of like this kind of going to the Enneagram and they're like, oh, this person cares so much about their image or oh, they're going to die if people don't see them as successful. It's not so much that for me as it is. I use it as a tool to get what I want. Like I know I like I know like like you said earlier, you need resources to have a certain level of fun. But at the end of the day. It's about the experience at the end of it, more so about everything before that. So yeah, I would be fine. I've said it countless times, like if I lost everything and went back. Mm, that is really resilient. And it gives people a better mentality look at things. You yeah. see everything as an adventure. You're, you put less pressure on yourself. Because yeah. a lot of people put a lot of pressure on themselves to the point where they don't act and they don't do because they're in a state of paralysis. Yeah. It's almost like their parachute didn't shoot off with when they were skydiving and they're panicking. And mm -hmm. you're teaching them another way to look at it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Drink the Chuck Kool-Aid. <laughs> How do you process feelings and emotions? Do you analyze feelings logically or allow yourself to go through the emotions? Uh, how do I process them? Huh? Uh, so I used to try and like think it through. So like, I love, well, I went through stages. Like in the beginning of college, it was pretty reactionary with how I felt about things. Like if something made me angry or annoyed me, um, then towards the end, I started just sitting there and feeling it for a minute. And then like it would subside. And now I kind of label it. So I'll be like, oh, this is anger. And that's what it is. And it's going to go away in a couple seconds. So just let it ride out. Like that's my experience with uh, my experience with it. I'll just be like, or yeah, like, because uh, I guess the main um, emotion I feel is like anger and excitement. I think it was, uh, I think uh, Flo State had said that, like he felt anger and excitement and not a lot in between. I'm very similar to that. I feel a lot of anger and I feel a lot of excitement. Um, and so for me, it's like when I feel anger, I basically just label. I'm like, this is anger. And then this could be used as energy. Like this can be used as motivation to fix whatever is making me angry. And if I can't fix it, well, then it's just like I label it as anger and let it fuse out. Or like, honestly, I need to physically get it out. So I have to like go to the gym or something. But besides that, yeah, that's basically how I process it. Sadness. It's just one of those things that like, I don't even know. It just hits me. Like my grandma died like two years ago and like all throughout the funeral, I was fine. And then like 
at a moment, like I just got a rush of sadness and like broke down. And then like right after I was fine and back to normal. And it's like, like that's how like sadness and that type of stuff hits me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It blindsides you a little bit sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting that you like to experience anger or excitement. How often are you angry and how often are you excited? So it's just I'm excited pretty much every day. <laughs> it's like there's always like something. And I, I think maybe I get excited about little things like, I don't know. We like on Saturday, I was walking in the square um, and there was a jazz band. I got excited to go sit down and watch it. Like it was cool. <laughs> or I thought earlier today, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to order Chinese food tonight. I was like, yo, I can't wait for that Chinese food. Stuff like that. Um, and you had said anger. Anger could be like I'm losing in pool or something, and I'm getting like irate. But then it's like I channel that anger and start focusing super hard and come back or whatever it may be. Mm. I might have uh, missed part of the question. I can't remember. Is that correct? You answered it perfectly. Yeah. Okay. You're actually very good at covering the territory of the questions. You're very eloquent, which gets people to see the ESTP mind more clearly too. Yeah. So kudos to you. Thank you. And so what's an easy way method to connect with you in real life? How do you want to be socialized with? Interesting. So it's, it's funny that you ask this because this is something that I, I almost feel like our generation is the only generation that cares about this. And I feel like for me, it's like, you don't have to, I know it's not the answer to the question, but you don't have to know how to connect with me or uh, there is no way to socialize with me. Like just be you. And if I like it, I like it. If I, if I don't like, I don't like it. It's, it's really that simple. Like whenever, like I see this thing, like, how can we like act towards you or how can we make you comfortable or whatever? Like if somebody were to ask me that, I'd be like, be you. Cause it's like, <laughs> that's where you're going to be most comfortable. And I'm going to be comfortable if you're comfortable. And as long as you're not a horrible person who's saying horrible shit, like you're not going to be that bad to hang out with and I'll, we'll figure it out and we'll do something fun. It's really that simple. Yeah. So honestly, there's no way you have to be around me. Just be yourself because I'll pick up when you're not being yourself. And then that's when I'll be like, because I think ESPs, we could just read people really well off the back and see everything about you. Like I can look at somebody and be like, this person's a narcissist and needs a lot of attention and they're doing different like deflating tactics to like feel better. And they're manipulating this person, this person, like I'll just break it down like that in my head and I'll be like, okay, you're somebody to avoid for the night. So it's like, if you come at me with some like fake energy or like trying to pretend like you're something like if you come, I have a lot of dudes who will come up to me. We were at a little baby concert the other day and all these like little dudes come up to me. They're like, yo, what's up G like these white. And then, you know me, I don't even talk like that. So like for me, that was the first point for me to be like, Get out of my section, bro. Like, I don't, I don't want to talk to you. Like that, that, and so if they had been like, hey, what's up, man? Do you want a beer or something? I'd have been like, hell yeah, dude, come in there. You know what I mean? Because it's like you're being yourself. So be yourself. Yeah, yeah. That is the advice for all of life. You get it when, you know, you're asked for dating advice. People are like, just be yourself. If you want to become friends with someone, just be yourself. It's better to get rejected in that state and know right off the bat if yeah. you're compatible than to elongate it just because you're putting up a persona. Which mm -hmm. introverted type do you relate to most and which I type perplexes you the most? Um, okay. So I type I relate to the most. Mm. This one's kind of hard because like I think about things and this is going to be kind of a weird way to, I don't think about things the way the ISTP does. I mean, I guess I do a little bit, but I guess the way I perceive myself is more of like how an INTP or INTJ thinks about things. Cause like an INTP will like break down things very logically in their head with that TI. And I don't know that ISTP is necessary. I don't know. I can't speak for ISTPs, but an INTP I knew, like I really would always love talking to them because it would break down these things in these different categorical ways. And I just, I had listened to it all day. Um, wait, was it relate to, oh, man, see, that's such a hard question. Relate to like, I don't know that I related to him. I know I liked listening to him. Um, dang, like relate to, I guess it would probably be the ISTP then. Cause like, they're the ones that go and do the wild stuff and like, 
Yeah, I'd love to say INTP, but we just don't do the same things. Like ISTP probably hits a close. And which one perplexes me the most? Okay, like, so I would love to say which type regardless. So I know P's are probably the introvert that perplexes me the most. I have a friend who's a really good friend of mine that's INFP and there's just no rhyme or reason to how he lives his life. Like he's always like going back and forth. Like he, he might have a, like be really happy and tell me about this new job in a warehouse where he's making 25 an hour with good benefits and he's so happy about it and his life is about to get on track. And then he immediately like blows up the situation and walks out of work and then drives and then crashes his car. And like within like five minutes, like he's right back where he just was. And like, I, it's been a, for three or four years now, a perplexing pattern of that happening. And I just, I love to do, but I, it really confuses me what's going through his head and like why this is a pattern or why like, you, you let little things, why little things cause such big explosions like that. Um, as far as type, I really don't understand or can't like, I try to have a conversation with, but things just always go left. I tend to have a lot of ENFP buddies, but my opinions tend to really like rub them the wrong way somehow, or, and it can be super basic. Like, oh, that's just how that works. Oh yeah, it works this way. Like this is how the political system works. And they're like, no, that's not right. And I'm like, it is right. And they're like, well, it's right, but it's not, it's correct, but it's not right. And like, they're going, and it, they go down a rabbit hole that I'm can't possibly go. Cause they're going in there any FI super hard. And I can't possibly like follow what you're, <laughs> what you're getting at. Like, I just don't. And I think with the SETI, they don't understand what we're getting at, but I think with ENFPs, they more so are in their own world where they're, they're viewing it as your through their own lens their own moral lens and their own personality. And it's like, so it's like, they're not very much willing to look from your perspective and be like, Oh, you don't mean anything by this. Like, I think the SCP is the most perplexing for them as well. Like they just can't understand how we function. Um, and then at ESFJ, like I really don't understand why like the ESFJs in my life care so much about like whether I eat what they want me to like, like every time I go over, I don't know the the ESFJs I know, like whenever I go like for a dinner party or, thanksgiving or whatever like they're, they'll just throw food in my put food on my plate and make me and if you don't want to eat it it's a problem or if you don't do there's just so many problems and landmines with esfjs i'm like why do you care or how do you have the time to care about this there's esfjs that i love of course but even the ones i love their selflessness which i respect sometimes it blows my mind how selfless and caring they can be and how much they could care so much about everybody else but then not themselves. That always blows my mind. Mm. So that's a very perplexing like thing that I just cannot like unwrap my head around like Jesus. Yeah, because when you do FE things, you typically have a TI calculation that goes into it. What's in it for me or what kind of deal is this? So I make sure that I don't get the short end of the stick beforehand. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I would say that. It's like, I don't know, it's like, it's like negotiation. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to be nice to you to get something from you. I, it's not like I have an agenda per se. I think that's more of an NI thing, but I am going to be aware. Like, so like, let's say we're hitting it off and all of a sudden, cause I've had like, I've had, since I've graduated, I've had plenty of people reach out to me and we'll be having a good conversation. And it's like, I can already tell at the beginning of the conversation, but then it starts going to like, so yeah. So, you know, like I was hoping, you know, like, I, I like this job over here. And like, I know you interned there two summers ago. And like, I know, uh, and I already know where it's going. It's like, I'm not stupid, dude. Like, got like, so it's not so much in, in personal life in business life. I would say like, yeah, I am pretty like calculating on, but that's because you have to be, it's business, it's numbers. Like you don't have a time, like these things could really affect your company or somebody else's. But yeah, so I'd say like TI definitely always comes before FE. So FE coming first is like, what? Like in ISFJs and INFJs, I get it. But in ESFJs, I don't. And ENFJs tend to have an agenda or a reason, at least the ones I knew, I've known too. They tend to have a, a agenda. Like 
some free game for all you INFPs getting gained by these ENFJs out there. Like, they're players, bro, and they're no different than us ESTPs. I'm just going to say that. Like, they've got an agenda. Well, with the ESFJ, it's like, no, like, that person is really, like, they didn't like my cupcakes. Oh, my God. Like, they're freaking out. It's just like, dang, I, I don't relate to that, and I don't understand that. But, yeah, everybody's different. Makes sense, makes sense. And so what is your relationship with to anger? We talked a bit about this, but I was wondering if there's any amount of nuance you'd want to go into it as well. How um, often, like I can get angry pretty it's interesting. I only get angry at like big things. So like well, my relationship with anger is like at, at this point in my life, I, I'm very much able to control it. But I get angry like everybody else, like I guess the the most telling relationship to anger is that it needs to be physically extracted from me. So like I need to like do like push ups or go like I can't. I need to do something that physically alleviates it. It's a very physical manifestation to me. There's not a lot of thoughts of how could you do this? How could you do this to me? What what was that about? Like how could you be such a piece of shit? There's none of that going on. It's just this feeling of like intense energy that needs to be released and i think that's why you see like that type of like some when they're younger you see estps get into fights a lot because it's like it's just the only way to get it out man like <clears throat> talking about an account to 10 ain't gonna do a whole lot for escp like just being honest like it's just not gonna work so that's just kind of how it goes that's my relationship interesting how do you choose experiences to have? What boxes need to be checked off to make it a reality? Uh, so when you say what boxes need to be checked off to make it a reality, what do you mean? Like, because it's like it's a reality if it's happening, right? <laughs> yeah. What criteria do you need to even choose the experience? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so like, how do you choose experiences to have? Uh, I mean, honestly, like, it's just kind of like, I live in Austin, so there's like a lot to do. This is like big tech hub. There's like all time. There's just so much to do. Like Joe Rogan, his comedy club is like 10 minutes from me. So we go there like every Wednesday and like his like watch his comedy. And it's like impromptu. He just like kind of like talks to the audience and brings them up. But it's like there's always stuff going on. So like when it comes to to like if I I just want to do a fun thing every day. So it's not that it has to be the best thing. My criteria is like, is it something that I'm going to find enjoyable? It's not like I go through it like a checklist and think, oh, like, is there going to be this? I will say like a big thing like um, is like I, I definitely prefer like bigger groups and more people than like a more intimate setting. But I can also like vibe with like a, a feel – me and a couple of girls I work with went for sushi the other day and they were talking about having like a little, you know, they're kind of like introvert, like, you know, like they like to read books and like be introvert. So like, I was like, you know, like I wouldn't mind like doing, they, they invited me to a board game night and I was like, I wouldn't mind that. Like some wine and cheese and board games. Like I'd do that shit all day. So it's like, it really like, there is no criteria. As long as it's a vibe, it's a vibe. Uh, can you tell me more about your vibe checking or how you suss up the vibes of things? Uh, vibe checking so like reading uh like what energy does do things give off to you one that's like not enjoyable or one that is uh is enjoyable like i, I don't like so like vibes i can get like negative vibes off a person like i can tell like if there's a dude who just keeps staring at you in the bar or he's just like staring at you or getting in your space like you obviously know that's like a negative vibe and this guy's a hater if somebody's like you're talking to them and they're trying to fake like they're disinterested or they're just like trying to make a joke at somebody's expense like you know that's a bad vibe like and then if you got somebody who's all smiles and like let's say let's say there's three people there's joe bob and kenny Let's say they're all vibing and Kenny says something a little stupid because Kenny's a little nervous and he's trying to like fit in and have a good time. And then Kenny just says something where it's funny. Me and my buddy I used to work with, he called me and he was telling me a situation. We were talking about this earlier. Like 
if if Kenny says something a little stupid, a social faux pas, if 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 Bob, the other guy, just laughs at you, he's like, huh, I feel you there. I'm like, that's a good vibe. Like, that's a vibe. Like, he's not going to ruin the vibe and be like, Kenny, what dumb shit are you talking? Because that's just a bad vibe. Like, so that's what I mean. Like, vibe for me is like, are you going to keep the positivity flowing? Are you going to keep the good times happening? Or are you just having a shitty night? Maybe the females ain't paying attention to you. I don't know what it is. And you feel like you want to come over here and like try and like big dick somebody for no reason. Or if you're a girl, are you going to be that girl? Because there's tons of girls that do this, like where they try to like dominate all the other chicks and talk down and like be super like, I don't know, like just really loud and grab your attention. Like, let's say you're talking to like, like, um, one of your like female friends over here and they're telling you they got a promotion and then this loud girl and like i can think of one particular that comes up and just like starts hugging on you and like oh how, how are you and she like steps in front of the other chick it's like when people do stuff like that that's a bad vibe that i don't i don't like i don't mess mm -hmm. with that yeah that clarifies a lot <laughs> yeah and so kitty asks what is your life philosophy a motto you live by yeah uh so this one I kind of stole, but I guess it, like for me, improve and always, always. So everything should always be improving everywhere. You know, it used to be dominate in always, always, but I feel like improve is a lot, a lot healthier. Um, so that one, and then I don't know what it boils down to, but I'm a big proponent of living life to the fullest, doing everything you want to do without the social inhibitions. If you want to be a bachelor your whole life, go do that. If you want to be married your whole life, go do that. If you want to go travel the country and live backpacking in Europe for the rest of your life, which I think would be awesome, like go do that. If you want to crunch numbers and work an investment job and make a ton of money and your life is pretty much nightlife and investment banking, like go do that. Like you can do like whatever you feel like doing. Um, and you don't have to change because you want to keep up with the Joneses or whatever, because they're miserable anyway. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's like you're either slightly going up or you're slightly going down at all times. There's no such thing as just staying at the same level all the time. It's either you're improving or you're deteriorating. And so, yeah. and so it's important to have some sort of motivation to do something because yeah. It's like stocks. Stocks rarely stay in a stable momentum. They're typically going up or down or slightly like. In yeah. And that's how confidence is built. Like by improving a little bit each day, focus on improving. Don't focus on competing with other. Well, I think, you, I think it's important to compete with others. So you know where you stand. So you have, so you don't develop narcissism and think you're better than you are. I think that's a huge problem, you know, personal opinion in today's day and age is that we're getting rid of so much things, so many like different things that like when you involve social media and stuff, now you got somebody who could do like a stupid video of them roller skating downstairs. And now they've got 5 million followers and get a 500 K check a year. And they think they're the shit and they're giving life advice on their YouTube channel and they didn't do shit, but bust their ass. And so it's like, there's a lot of like, <clears throat> problems when it comes to damn i'm completely forgetting my point but like there's just a lot of problems when you don't have hierarchy but like yeah the best way to build that confidence i remember now is just to improve 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 and you should have like some type of role model or some type of person who has done what you want to do in life uh to kind of look to to be like okay how did they make this a reality because that's how you're gonna make it a reality is by looking at what somebody else did you don't have to follow them verbatim but it's a nice like little like equation that you can follow. Yeah. It's like why reinvent the wheel when someone has already done the wheel well? It's way better yeah. to do Why not improve the wheel? <laughs> improve the wheel that's already there. True. Yeah. Have you ever hit a wall you couldn't break, metaphorically speaking? Not yet, but I believe there is one. Like I think a lot of like what you can do comes down to your uh, your mental side of things. So do you believe or not like in what you can do? So like, honestly, no, like I'm 25 and I've done pretty much everything I've set my mind to, you know, I've toured with celebrities 
I've lost, like I've gained 200 pounds and then lost 250 pounds. Like, I don't know. Like I've just kind of like been on both sides. I've been like a failure living with my parents and like working at target. I've been rich as well. Like there's just like so much like, so for me, I think there will be as I keep improving and trying to climb. I think everybody has a threshold. I think nobody realizes this until you start to get like real success. Cause as you start to move up that tax bracket, like real players come out to play, like, you know, like, and I, I don't know if this is necessarily an MBTI thing, but it does seem like at least where I'm at career wise, it is straight like ENTJs, ENFJs and like ISTJ, like fools that's really, and like they're all threes or eights. Like, so like there does come like a metaphorical wall where you're climbing up like this hierarchy of life to where like it's really recently, the past two years has really given me a different perspective on somebody like Jeff Bezos or somebody who's just successful like that because the amount of competition out here that you don't see when you're, you know, like I, I was telling my buddy the other day, like James Bond is real, man. There are real James Bonds that like are good at everything, smooth, calculating, strategic, that will knock you on your ass if you're not paying attention. And so like being right now, like, a lot of the people I compete with at work are like 40, 45 years old. So I haven't hit it there yet, but I see a lot of really bright guys, a lot of, a lot of people that I'm like, wow, like that guy is something. And, you know, all throughout college, it was pretty relatively easy for me to do everything. And now I'm finally starting to hit that point where I actually have to compete and like use my mojo, you know? And I, so I definitely believe there is a point where everybody has a wall of potential you know, but have I hit it yet? No, but I'm not naive and narcissistic enough to say like, there is no wall for me to hit. It's great that you know about the mental barriers that a lot of people have. It's psyching themselves up before they even try things. So they're not even close to their wall of potential. They didn't even hit any of the walls that they wanted to hit. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, you will hit walls that break you down, but I guess like you can, you, you, you eventually will break it, you know, like, and w when you hit that wall, you'll see, I, I believe you'll see that wall is unbreakable before like you actually experience, like, unless your ego is that big, like somebody who experiences where they're like flabbergasted that they got beat, their ego is just probably too big. They probably just think they're like too much of the shit to be in reality and see like, there's no way you were going to win this, this like reality is against you man mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and uh they're talking about reading people <laughs> don't you <laughs> read your eyes <laughs> i love that question like i don't know like it, it's like you can just feel you people have little mannerisms and takes and little things that they do that like give off tells and then there's the modeling of understanding how you think and understanding how people that you've gotten close to think and being able to notice the connection between those mannerisms. And there's just a lot. It's a very like flowing thing of intention. People have different things like tonality dropping and wince, little winces and just little things that they, they give off. You know, like I, I, I was telling um, my, uh, my girlfriend this the other day, I was saying like, you know, when, um, you know when a girl is interested in you at the bar, when her feet point at you. If her feet are pointing away from you, bro, it doesn't matter how much she smiles in your face and plays the You ain't going nowhere with that, man. Like, she's just acting, dude. But, like, if her feet are pointing at you, even if she is ignoring you and looking the other way, she's focused on you. And so this is, like, something that little things like that, these are just, like, little nuggets you pick up along the way. And you get so many nuggets that, like, I don't know. It's like you've learned a new language to interpret the world through. Interesting. Now I'm just curious what my tells are and if you've noticed any of them and if you'd tell me one day. <laughs> yeah, I will tell you one day. Not today, though. <laughs> Walls are a challenge. I do not think these business. Uh, yeah, they are a challenge. Um, I, I, I think we don't know how to when to give up. But that's a good thing in the beginning. And I think an ESCP will know when to give up. When they've like, it's kind of like, like Michael Jordan again, when he played the flu game, you could say like he should have given up and you could say definitely before he played the full game, um, you could definitely say before he played the full game um, that he was out of his mind, 
But then he played the full game and he won. He scored like, what, 49 points? So it's like, I don't know. It's one of those things where like, ESPN's, I feel like I'm constantly the person where people are like, oh, I don't know about that. And then let's like, I make it happen. And I feel like when an ESP knows like they're not going to be able to make it happen, they'll know. You know, like, and I know everybody's like, eh, I don't know about that. But like, I don't know. That's just how my mind processes it. <laughs> That's amazing. And so have you ever thought about being a motivational speaker? Have you ever thought about being a mo I've been told this many times. Um, I've been told like to start YouTube channels and stuff, but I thought about it. Yeah. Like in the future, like once I've done everything I want, because the thing for me is like to be a motivational speaker, you just have to have lived more life. And I feel like I have so much more life to live before I'm ready to deliver, you know, insights to people like that. Cause you know, I'm learning every day still. So I think once I'm like 40, 45, 50, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll think about it, but yeah, it's definitely crossed my mind, but I just think I'm too young to do something like that right now. Mm, yeah. Well, technically we're the same age, Charles. <laughs> and so yeah. thanks for coming out. you are really a bottle of wisdom in an ESTP. You've lived a lot of life and you have a lot of stories to tell from it and a lot of experiences to extrapolate from. You not only take from theory, but you also take from real life doing of the things, which is actual down to earth wisdom because you actually know how it applies in life and that's something a lot of people miss and it's something you have in boatloads and yachtfuls and airplane fulls of <laughs> <laughs> and you're super successful and you're dope to hang out with and the comment section was really happy to ask you all these questions they could relate in certain areas and they just liked listening to you speak and so thank you everyone for asking your lovely questions in the sidebar. Yeah, and thank you, Charles, for being a bomb ass ESTP. You recommend <laughs> it so well. Thank you guys. This was fantastic, man. It was fantastic. You have such a great channel. It's so cool what you're doing. So keep it up. Thank you for your reflexive FE. <laughs> <laughs> you call me out. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye guys. <laughs>